How's it going today, guys? Let's get the day started. going everybody so today we're going to be talking about the hydraulic system on the UH-60 Blackhawk so we got a lot of course material to cover here but by the time we are done with today you're gonna to have a better understanding of the UH-60 Blackhawk hydraulic system <clears throat> now it's gonna be a little crash course uh, this is gonna be good for students going into um, aircraft qualification and uh, just maybe even people that need to be refreshed on the system. Um, this is going to help you guys. It's going to help me kind of get in the books, look over some stuff, talk some things. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, we're up here on the hydraulic deck. Got the platform moved out of the way. So we're going to take a look at the uh, system here in a minute. So I'm going to just talk about the overall system. Um, I'm going to talk about the hydraulic pump number one system we're going to talk about the high pump number two system and we're going to talk about the backup hydraulic all right the first thing we're going to do is identify each pump so right here we have the backup pump the backup pump is the easiest one to identify because it's got this black ac motor attached to it backup pump just in front of the or behind the backup pump you have the number one hydraulic pump right here you have your number two hydraulic pump now that we've covered which hydraulic pumps are where we are going to talk about the uh, pressure modules so right here right next to the hydraulic pump you have your utility module your utility module is pressurized by your backup pump comes into this utility module and from there it runs to two places one place it's going to run to is your number one transfer module which is right here the number one system also pressurizes the number one transfer module inside this transfer module there is a valve in there that's pressurized by both systems if one system has a PSI that falls below a certain PSI the backup pump is going to override that uh, valve in there and it's going to take over pressurizing the system in the number one transfer module coming over here we have the number two transfer module just like I talked about in the number one transfer module it's the same thing that happens for the number two transfer module it's pressurized by the number two system as well as the backup they're fighting for pressure and when uh, the pressure on one side of the valve drops below a certain PSI the backup pump will take over and pressurize the number two system so we talked about the number two transfer module and the number two hydraulic pump 
The number two hydraulic pump also pressurizes this pilot assist module right here. Pressure runs into here and it pressurizes your SAS actuators, uh, your trim, your FPS, all of your pilot assist uh, items in the front of the aircraft. So let's talk about the servos. So right here, right in the middle of the hydraulic deck, you have your primary servos. Looking down, you have this servo right here is your number one primary servo, number one primary servo, number one primary servo. On the other side of that, you have a redundancy. Number two primary servo, number two primary servo, and number two primary servo. Now, hydraulic pump number two pressurizes number two primary servo. Hydraulic pump number one pressurizes, you guessed it, the number one primary servo. The backup hydraulic pump can pressurize everything on this aircraft, including uh, both of the primary servo systems. Now we've gone over the utility module, the transfer modules, the pilot assist modules. Um, we've gone over all of the hydraulic pumps. Now let's talk about what happens with your uh, backup hydraulic pump. So your backup hydraulic pump can pressurize the whole system like I already said. The other things that can pressurize that none of the other systems can pressurize is the uh, backup tail rotor servo and the APU accumulator. Those are the two unique things that it does. Talking about the number one hydraulic pump, we know it pressurizes the primary number one servo and it also pressurizes the tail rotor servo. Now, in the tail rotor, there are two servos. You have your primary tail rotor servo, the one that it's always on, and then you also have your backup tail rotor servo that can be pressurized by the um, backup hydraulic pump in the event that you lose pressure in the uh, tail rotor servo. Now, number two pump, we know it pressurizes uh, the primary servos number two, and all of your pilot assist in the forward portion of the hydraulic deck. Um, backup pump can pressurize all of those systems that I just mentioned. Now let's talk about what happens when you get issues in your hydraulic pump number one system. So what do we know about the number one system? We know it pressurizes two things, right? It pressurizes your number one primary servos and it pressurizes your uh, primary servo for your tail rotor, right? Very important. So it pressurizes those two things. Now, what happens when you get a number one reservoir of low? Meaning the pressure inside of that hydraulic pump has dropped uh, to 60% 60, 60 or below. Um, what's going to happen here is your backup pump is going to come on because it recognizes that the hydraulic pump pressurizes very important things and it needs to come on. Um, hydraulic logic, the aircraft has a, a program within it, hydraulic logic is going to isolate the biggest surface area inside of that system. The biggest surface area in the number one hydraulic pump system is the tail rotor. It, it uses logic to determine, hey, um, if a problem was going to happen or a leak was going to happen in the number one system, it's likely in the tail rotor. So it isolates the uh, tail rotor servo and turns on the backup uh, tail rotor servo and it is, that is pressurized through the backup pump system. That's what happens when you get a number one um, reservoir of low. Now, 
Um, so your tow, your tow rotor is pressurized by the backup pump. It's on backup servo right now. What's going on with your uh, number one hydraulic pump? Well, your number one hydraulic pump is still pressurizing your primary uh, number one servo system. It's still giving pressure to that. Hydraulic Logic thinks that the leak is um, isolated now, and it's going to um, continue to pressurize the backup uh, tail rotor servo. Now, the next thing that would happen if the leak wasn't in the tail rotor servo is the leak would likely be in the primary number one servo or the hydraulic number one itself. The only way to know that is if the leak continues and you get a um, hydraulic number one pump failure. What's going to happen then is the backup pump is going to come on and pressurize the number one primary servos and then you as the pilot have to monitor to make sure that you don't get a backup pump res low because then using your own pilot logic you can determine that okay the leak is clearly in the number one primary servo system so what do you do then you take your primary servo off switch and you turn the primary number one servos off to contain the leak now the number one system is over we can now talk about the number two system so what happens when you get a number two pump res low when you get a number two res low what's going to happen is you remember that pilot assist module that i talked about that's pressurized by the number two system that uh, pilot assist module is going to uh, isolate the pump from pressurizing that system so you're going to lose all your pilot assist uh, module things um, so your sas and boost are going to come off you're going to likely uh, you're going to lose fps you're also going to most likely lose your trim as well now um, the number two hydraulic pump is still going to be pressurizing the uh, number two primary servos now at this point unlike the number one system the backup pump doesn't come on for a backup to res low um, you as the pilot um, are going to continue to monitor you're flying along and you have a high t a high pump to failure meaning uh, you clearly lost all of your hydraulic fluid um, and the number two system is no longer able to pressurize itself so for that the backup hydraulic pump is then going to kick on and recognize we got a real problem it doesn't really care about the pilot assist module pilots can fly without that but um, it does recognize that it needs to um, pressurize the primary servos so it's going to kick on for a high pump to failure and come in um, and override the pressure in the transfer to module and pressurize your primary um, two system now you as the pilot just like in the number one system you have to monitor to make sure you don't get a backup pump res low because if you get a backup pump res low uh, you are going to have to turn your primary two servos off because logically it would make sense at that point that the uh, leak is in the number two uh, primary servo system so we've hit uh, the res one and the res low two uh, we've talked about what uh, things the uh, backup pump pressurize, pressurizes outside of the normal hydraulic system. We know it pressurizes uh, the APU accumulator and the backup tail rotor servo. Now, um, that's pretty much the hydraulic system in a nutshell. Um, it's a little crash course. Um, not too much else I can really talk about with this system. I'm open to comments if you guys want me to cover anything else with the hydraulic system, but yeah, I mean, pretty pretty good little crash course there. So I'm gonna get this, uh, get this thing buttoned up and put her to bed. You guys have a good day.